Now contact resistance, it plays very important role. The contact resistance can be divided into two parts. One is streamline resistance and the second one is we say contact resistance. However, both are contact resistance only. What is streamline resistance? The current flow lines are distorted when flowing through overlap surface. If this one surface and if this is another surface, now if current is flowing from this to this, what will happen? The current has to jump to this and then it has to flow like this. So, because of that there would be a resistance that we say it is streamlined resistance. It will jump like this and then it will start flowing on this one. So, this type of resistance we say streamlined resistance. And then another resistance what we talk about is <coughs> if we need to reduce the streamlined resistance what we have to do? We have to increase the overlap, surface overlap. The easiest way of reducing the streamlined resistance is to reduce this, so increase the surface overlap. Now, second one is contact resistance. Contact resistance why it happened? None of the surfaces are super smooth. That means, every atom or molecule on this is not attached to that. There is some always microscopic projections and because of that there is not 100 percent contact the contact is less. If contact is less, what will happen? Current density on those contacts would be increased. Your resistance will also increase because resistance is a function of cross sectional area and the length. Now, the cross sectional, a cross -sectional area getting reduced because of the small projection. Even it looks smooth, but if you look, uh, look in a microscope, you see lot of projection and there. So, only those projected parts get in contact. So, what you have to do because what you have to do? You have to try to make as smooth as, sir, as possible. What does it do, uh, do? First of that is create resistance because of that temperature can increase. The second thing it accelerate corrosion also because of the elevated temperatures because of the current flowing only on the limited places, which is not visible to the naked eye, but as you see, as soon as you see in under microscope, you can see it very easily. So, for streamline, uh, streamline res, uh, resistance to decrease, you need to increase the overlap surface. This contact resistance can happen because of the external, uh, external uh, effect also, like moisture in grace the form of uh, the formation of oxide layers, the fo deposit of dirt, grease and all those things. Because of that also the contact resistance increases. So, we have to whenever we are doing, uh, when, when, whenever we are assembling or making, we need to keep the place as clean as possible surfaces as smooth as possible to minimize the possible contact resistance. Now, the another thing which we are talking is similar to what we have talked the voltage drop in, in bus bar. The similar way there is a possibility of <coughs> voltage drop in sensor harshness also. What are the sensor harshness? What are the sensor harness? Voltage sensors you have to put everywhere, correct? Now, you have to put thermistor everywhere. Now, this would be connected by a wire to the BMS, battery management system. Now, because of this and the sensors would be at different location. So, you cannot have the same length, you will have a different length, but can we still make that resistance equal? If it is However, the sensing currents are very low, it is in milliampere or in microampere. It would not impact huge, but it will still impact maybe 1 millivolt, maybe 2 millivolt. And when we recalibrate back to the voltage, uh, that voltage to the value, this 1 millivolt, 2 millivolt impact. 
So, for robust battery pack operation, voltage, current, and temperature monitoring is essential. Now, the harness provides an electrical pathway for measuring these parameters, either voltage or current or temperature. It is essentially an electrical conductor similar to the bus bar. Only thing is that thickness, width, cross section is much, much less because the current flow is very low, micro ampere or milli ampere. Typically in, uh, okay, how many sensors would be there in a battery pack? So, typically for the example what we have taken 2 p 16 s, we will have 8 voltage sensors, sorry 16 s, so we will have a 16 voltage sensors, because we measure the cell for every parallel, measure the voltage for every parallel cell. In addition you have current. And then we add up to find out what is the voltage. In addition to that we will have a current one current sensor is sufficient. We can have multiple, but one current sensor is sufficient. However, voltage sensor has to be 16. And then, te temperature sensor? then we will have a temperature sensor. So, temperature sensors ideally at least one should be for every cell, but by experience or experimentation or simulation, we know where would be the maximum temperature. So, we try to tap only those points. However, if you look upon safety, we do not know which cell will go in thermal runaway. So, generally it is advisable to put the maximum thermal sensor, but then it costs. But you have wireless sensor to avoid thermal resistance. There are wireless sensors, but then again it costs and then manage, you have to manage the wireless sensor in the vehicular environment. So, come back uh, to this slide. So, critical when harness measures at both nearer and the farther distance. In that case, we do not have the same length, we have a different length and that, that would be there. If my BMS is at one end of the battery pack, nearest cell will have the shortest length, the farthest cell will, cell will have the longest length. You should give some slack end normally. You, you can do, but again that would unnecessarily increase your material cost. And any moving object is not desirable inside another moving object. The longest conductor will have high, higher voltage drop and hence incorrect measurement, because when you recalibrate back to the parameter, what it does? It does voltage and current sensing, but then you have already a program or a table from where after seeing that voltage and current, it will give you back the either temperature or current or voltage. So, what you can do? Either you measure and then correspondingly, corresponding gain you put it into software or you try to equalize resistance in all wires. So, this is example of one of the voltage sensor. The current drawn through these wires are very low, micro ampere or milli ampere. However, while calibration, it is also in micro ampere and milli ampere only. So, even your resistance is changing by milli ohm or micro ohm, that will impact there. During the retrieving the value. Now, significance of voltage drop, we try to solve example here. The wire gauge diameter is 20 AWG or 0 0.81 corresponding diameter is 0 0.81 mm, length 300 mm. The corresponding wire resistance would be 0 0.1 ohm for the copper conductor with a measurement current of 20 milli ampere through the wire. So, 0.2 millivolt. volt. 
even though sensing current is 20 milli ampere, actually it should be 0 0.02 volt here. Twenty milli ampere, correct only. Twenty milli ampere, zero point zero two volt into resistance will give you point two milli volt. My my sensing current is in milli ampere. My voltage drop is in milli volt. But then, when we are recalculating back, we are also talking about milli volt and micro volt only. Recalibrating in the sense, retrieving the voltage value. So, that is impacts there. For low current it may not be significant, however, for precision point of measurement it is become significant. Similar way for, for thermistor, okay, before going to that we would like to know about current equalization in parallel path which we were talking initially. Now, if you talk about a BMS, it will have multiple switches where we distribute the current equally. Why we distribute the current equally? Because each one has a particular temperature limit. My temperature cannot exceed more than 70 degree or 75 degree C, but then the corresponding current cannot be 8 ampere or 7 ampere, but if I have to draw. It depends upon the, uh, uh, the precision of measurement what we are looking for. Okay. However, you always have an option to correct it through software gain or by making the resistance equal in all path, which can be done otherwise also, not just by keeping all the length same. I can have thicker wire for a smaller uh, length and can have a so, like that way also, that is what next. Uh, I just found that uh, it is only 0 0.12 ampere per mm square, density is very low. So, you use a much narrower wire. Yes. No, that is what I am saying. It is all depends upon what is availability cost and then what you wanted to measure. Because when you talk about thermistor, thermistor also gives millivolt corresponding milli ampere current and then it is recalibrated back again to the temperature. So, any error here in milli ampere would reflect back there also. And the second thing generally we do the current sensing in all these cases. So, may not impact much, but if there is something which is related to voltage like thermistor, it is a voltage. So, it gets converted into current and then it sends and then again converted back into the voltage and then again converted back into temperature. Like uh, right now what we were discussing, can we make equal resistance even in the case of wiring harness? Yes, we can do by increasing the thickness of the, of the longer wire, but in that case we have to use the different wires for different sensors. Now, if you see here, so we have the four gates here or four switches here or four paths here, I 1, I 2, I 3 and I 4. Now, current is flowing here. What we ideally say that the current should be same in all the path. If it is not the same, what will happen? The some path temperature would be higher than other path where resistance is more. But after seeing this, you can easily say that I 1 and I 4 will have higher resistance because it has a longer path. If you see here that I 1 and I 4 has a longer path than I 2 and I 3. So, if I do not consider the thickness is remain same, what will happen? I 1 and I 4 resistance is more. 
so the current flow would be less than i2 and i3 i1 and i4 have the same resistance but more than i2 and i3 i2 and i3 has the same resistance but less than i4 and i1 so what will happen here the more current will flow through i2 and i3 less current will flow from i1 and i4 so if i have something known as mosfet let's suppose so my mosfet what i have designed is for equal current because why equal current because again the temperature would go there by i square r r is the internal resistance or jun junction resistance of the mosfet so if i have to divide 30 ampere equally so i'll divide 7.5 ampere in all the path but if in this path it is going 10 ampere i2 and i3 it is going 10 ampere because of the less resistance and i1 and i4 it is going 5 ampere what will happen my this two mosfets i2 and i4 would reach to the elevated temperature much faster than i1 and i4 so so what will happen if my design criteria is 70 degree c or 80 degree c or 90 degree c it will reach there and it will try to go further so what will happen that mosfet will fail once that mosfet is failed now these two paths are closed all the current will pass through i1 and i4 ultimately it will fail i4 and i1 and i4 also so i have designed it for same resistance in uh, i wanted to design it for same resistance for all the path however it has not happened how can we do that when parallel path must ex experience equal current flow we must have the equal resistance in those paths parallel path how can we do that what is resistance path resistance r is nothing but rho l by a now rho is constant for all the path what is not constant is l and l is also same no l is not same however what we were assuming a is same if we vary the cross sectional area depending on the length then my current can be equalized because resistance can be equalized for that what we have to do rho is rho is constant for all the path what is changing what we can change l and a so for my all paths l1 by a1 should be equal to l2 by a2 should be equal to l3 by a3 and should be equal to l4 by a4 so it becomes a simple ratio so wherever my l is more i have to provide more cross sectional area if my l is less i have to reduce the cross sectional area there and this is how in most of the electronics this is how it has been it is being done to equalize the current to equalize the equalize the current means you have to equalize the resistance yeah so especially especially in electronic circuit if you see or even in the regular circuit if i have it's also depends upon limitation so i may not have a switch which can take this 100 amperes or 30 amperes so if i have to divide in multiple switch so some portion of current should go equal portion of current in go in that so that's where we provide the several path but then resistance of all the path should be equal now next we'll be talking about bus bar joining method how do we join bus bar to the cells so there is a mechanical joint simple mechanical joint threaded where you put the nut and bolts and then tight it but most of the time in battery pack you weld the bus bar because you will not have a option of providing the threaded screw and bolts nut and bolts so what are the methods for that one we weld basically so there is a resistance welding a spot welding we say it very fast process keep on putting the two terminals provide the current and it will keep on welding by heating effect very low cost good quality control in fact whatever in automotive you see it's a mostly spot welding 
easily can be automated. You have to just move, put a moving table and then this comes, goes, comes, goes like that way. Difficult for highly conductive, conductive material and dissimilar materials. If there are copper and aluminum you have to weld, it becomes difficult there. Or it is a very highly conductive, you do not have any resistance, because of the resistance only the heat temperature elevated and then melting takes place and both the things get joined. You can see into the pic picture. In this you cannot produce very large joints. It is very small dotted type of joints, very small small joints, continuous joints, continuous dots. You, ca you cannot put a 10 mm by 10 mm joints with this. Temperature rise is measurable, means not very significant. That is why, because you do not want the temperature rise to be very high, otherwise your cell will get damaged. However, what happens in arc welding? Arc welding, we heat to very high temperature. So, that we cannot do it here in battery pack, especially when you are joining the bus bar. Now, the next one is laser welding. In laser welding, what we do? We put the bus bar over that and then we heat the bus bar through laser. And that heat is very localized heat because your energy concentration is at very small area. So, the only localized heating happens and because of localized heating that particular portion get welded. It could be with continuous laser, it could be with pulse width pulse, pulse laser and the laser capacity depends upon the thickness of the weldment. Again it is a very high speed e.g. less thermal in input, even in spot welding it heats up, it takes time, it is very fast. That much of energy can come quickly, localized melting happens and then weld get attached. Non-contact process, here in spot welding I have to touch both the things press here, the laser beam can come from somewhere else and can weld your things. Automation high, automation high initial cost, because laser is very harm, harmful to the people. So, you mostly you have to go for automation process, manual process does not work, because of the safety concern. Additional high shielding because it has a very high energy, concentrated energy. So, because of any reason it should not fall on you or anything else. In high reflective material what will happen? It will reflect back. You try to reduce the reflection, means you try to use the less reflective material for joining this process. How does this contact points the contact points for welding you always need to have a contact point correct. How do you ensure that this contact points are attached with this here, this. So, you may have to use some jigs and fixture that that contact points is in touch with each other with the proper pressure. So, you have to need, you may need some jigs and fixture. So, that is why need good joint fit up, which can intimate contact. There is a other method also ultrasonic welding, which we use when my thickness is very, very low, like foil type of terminals when we have. So, that time we use ultrasonic welding. Now, after doing all the things one assignment question, after assembling the 60 volt battery pack now it is now required to spot weld the bus bar and cell terminal together to avoid any miss contact during the use. Cell terminal and bus bar is of 6061T6 aluminum material and has a thickness of 1 mm and 0.2 mm respectively. The spot welding machine generates spots of 1.5 mm diameter. 
calculate the maximum force the weld can withstand because depending upon the weld strength you have to go for higher number of spots or lower number of spots or higher thickness of the spot higher die of the spot or lower die of the spot sigma allowable has been given it's a capital sigma it's a small sigma it's supposed to be that is 276 mega pascal now what happens in laser welding if the material thickness becomes very big so either we provide a keyhole a small hole so that at that particular place the material thickness or bus bar thickness is low and so that it can penetrate the heat can penetrate and get welded or if thickness is small enough which can be heated by laser then we don't have to do the keyhole type of function so how do we test the welding peel test and chisel test now you have two weldment you chisel with the force or you try to peel it and you can see the strength by providing the proper instrument there so this helps in mechanical consideration that even in this vibration even in this loading my weldment will be still working it won't get change so either you peel or you chisel in both the things you provide a external force and that external force you need to measure and that would be the strength of the weldment so these are destructive tests these are destructive tests yes after testing i can use the competition mm, yes so that's why some these are destructive tests so the summarize will summarize this section bus bar design should be designed with average current generally we say 5 ampere per mm square average current density we should design in such a way that there should be sufficient cooling by natural convection so that we don't have to use any external means should be easily manufacturable and the assembly also assembly should be easy so that would save in the production cost the material should be cost effective the and most widely material used for bus bar design is copper and aluminum nowadays aluminum is picking up a electrical system either bus bar or a cable should have the minimum voltage drop whenever possible and how can come we have a minimum voltage drop by having minimum resistance either it is due to contact resistance or because of the length or because of material resistivity or because of the elevated temperature we should reduce we should try to reduce the resistance and thus automatically voltage drop would be reduced sufficient electrical insulation to prevent accidents and mitigation it's a very important when we are talking about low voltage it doesn't make much difference but but however whenever we are going for higher voltage more than 120 volt dc it plays significant role in the safety and any accidental touch it should be me mechanically strong enough to sustain the vibration thermal induced in stresses bus bar joining methods how do we join for lower cost lower thickness we preferably go for spot welding however where fully automation is required laser welding would be a good substitute
it is a fast and very localized heating. So, it does not impact thermally cells or other component. So, in next class we will start uh, BMS design for the electric vehicle. Anything, any questions? So, what essentially in this chapter, in this section we have understood? What is electrical design? So, electrical design is basically the current flow path. Either you take bus bar or you take cables. We try to reduce the resistance of any form by selecting a proper material, by reducing the contact and streamline resistances. Then we also need to consider the mechanical and thermal stability and the our ultimate aim is always to reduce the voltage drop and that can happen by reducing the resistance. And then there are several ways we can reduce the resistance by selecting material, by providing sufficient cross sectional area. So, any question? So, next class we will uh, go for the BMS design and with that we will complete this chapter.